Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Servants. And so we are here again. It is time to make some more sense of what you're doing. A bigger picture is always good. For sometimes it is not always available for you to see that which is perhaps out of the sight of the choir itself. It's a larger picture. And you fit into this picture beautifully. The Earth's history is grander and greater than any of you know. And in a bigger scenario, the ancients knew it. There was a time clock running that would affect what you did. Although you have been here with the knowledge of dark and light for almost 200,000 years, it has only been in the last 30,000 that civilization has developed and the test really began. And the test is this, what would humanity do if left alone without guidance and where would it go? How would it proceed? Your archaeologists are linear. They have a preset bias that says that civilization grows and always starts small and gets better or worse, but it starts from one point and goes to another. And as they dig and as they look and as they search, this is the bias. What they don't know and what they did not expect is that there have been four civilizations of the planet. When left alone, humanity destroyed itself almost four times. In the future, archaeologists will discover this. Let this be a time of notification. For this is being shown and it's being recorded. And as odd as it may sound, let this be said now that archaeologists will discover things that do not make sense in the chronology that they expect. Earth is far different than you think. Add to this what we have told you before, that in a galaxy which is billions and billions of years old, 30,000 years is very quick. Is it possible, dear ones, logically, in the billions of years that the galaxy has formed, that life would have formed quicker on other planets than yours? And the answer is yes. You are the new kids on the block. And so with all of this known, I give you a setup. And the setup is this. Let me ask you about your children. You watch your children grow and you are aware of consciousness shift. The human brain starts to develop and eventually it will get to a place where it is thinking as an adult. And in that period of time, the children will awaken to themselves, they'll have self-realization and they will treat it differently depending upon how old they are. Some will move forward, some will not, depending upon the guidance you give them as a parent. Some will turn into a survivalists and bullies. Some will use force against the others for things they want and don't have. Some of them will not play well together with others. And as they grow with your guidance, they will. There will be an elegance that develops within the adult as they grow. And the parent will breathe a sigh of relief that they made it and that they're there. And I want you to picture something right now. 
What if you weren't there? What if the planet was only children? What would happen? Without guidance, without wisdom, without the elegance that you know about of human behavior and maturity, what would happen? Books have been written about that possibility. One of them, The Lord of Flies. Would you end up with marauding children killing one another, having no concepts of the elegance of getting along. I think you see the metaphor, do you not? And this is what you had four times. The earth turned into a situation where civilization could not get along and ended itself four times. This is the fifth time. And this time was foretold by the agents. The ancients said it was the last time. And when you turn this page, if you had not learned by yourselves what you needed to learn, you would have the end of humanity. And that was your prediction, if you recall. In your scriptures, that was the prediction. But the ancients had a different one. The potentials that if you would turn the corner, something else would happen. An elevated consciousness would begin. Now, use your common sense and your logic. Do you think that would have simply happened by itself because you passed the marker, or would there be some outside influence because of it? In come the parents. <laughs> the transmission from the great central source representing other planets of ascension will be given to you received here and what will it what will it give you what is appropriate what would you give if you found a tribe that had never advanced that was thousands of years old had never heard of anything else on the planet and were, were losing their population due to disease and death and bad water and all the other things, and you suddenly found them, what would you give them? Let me ask you this. In all logic, what would you give them, dear human being? Would it be McDonald's and Monsanto? No. No. No, let's, let's start to think about it. What would you give them? These are all metaphors. You'd give them clean water. You'd teach them to rotate their crops and work with Gaia. You'd give them tools so they could build what they wanted to build in a better way. You'd give them life extension without drugs. You'd show them what's in the forest that they would need and could use. And then when they'd have that, you'd teach them to read. You'd give them literacy. You'd show them poetry. You might even give them colors they've never seen. You'd show them artwork and music. And that is what the Pleiadians are going to do for you. Yes, there will be inventions, for you are device-driven, but not forever. The devices that you have, they'll reach a limit, dear ones. They're the training wheels on your bicycle. And there'll come a time when you won't need them and you'll throw them away and the consciousness will be high enough so that you will meld with physical things and do what the masters did. The Pleiadians are not coming to give you what they have. They're coming to give you the things that you want and you need that are elegant, the colors, the artwork, the music, the literacy, the, the, the awareness of what is really around you. Stand back, for in these next generations there will be unexpected things and they will follow the lines, potentially, of what I've given you as I stand here. The news that I give today will remain long after the corporeal body of this man is gone. And I want science to trot it out and look at it. And maybe this will not be quite as spooky then. And maybe this will not be full weird at all. Maybe this will be the truth. Indeed.
channeling is interesting. For the recipient and the one who delivers it must be out of the way. My partner steps aside. In order for this to happen in the way that I wish it to happen for you, he can have no foreknowledge of what I want to do. And what I wish to do depends upon this room and how receptive it might be to something you did not expect. First, let me set the scene. The mountain that you celebrate, that you've come to see, is alive. And there are many books that have been written about it and there have been those who have channeled those in it. Aurelia Louise Jones is here. She did not reincarnate. She went to be in the mountain where she belongs. And in the process she had a reunited time with Adama. You should know Adama. You cannot leave this place without a message from Adama. Adama will speak for himself, herself in just a moment. The information that has been esoteric to the max, unbelievable, is that in the mountain there is a city. And the city is basically Lemurian, mostly Pleiadian, which we have described is the same thing in this case. And that it has a purpose. There are those who continue to channel Adama accurately with truth. And they do it with the filters that they would have based upon what they expect. And I want Adharma to set the record straight. Now this may seem odd, but of course the whole thing seems odd. <laughs> the human being channels Cryon and I'm stepping in to channel Adama. You see, Adama is not on the other side of the veil. You see, Adama is alive. Adama has what we would call a quantum consciousness that always was and will be as long as Adama wants it. Now, does that sound like a Hebrew prophet to you <laughs> who could choose the moment of ascension when he was finished? This is a quantum attribute. Imagine life as long as you wish it to be either corporeal or not and a transition on your schedule. Does that sound odd to you? It sounds like it would be miraculous. Only angelic beings can do a thing like that. Really. Or perhaps it's simply high consciousness just for a moment or two. Let us see what Adama has to say. <coughs> Greetings, my beautiful children. I am Adama. And we have expected you. You sing the lullabies in my language that we expected. I want you to pay attention. No amount of verbiage from any human being or channeling from any human being would awaken the city that I represent. I am Adama. You see me as male. I am not. I am a collective consciousness of a multi-dimensional city filled with energy 
waiting to be released as a time capsule to you. It is beautiful. It is filled with maturity. But let me tell you the litmus test, as you would say. For we have been here a long time waiting for this, and we know that there is only one way for this, what we call the guardians, to release the information. There is only one way. And that is to hear our native language and songs sung by humans because this was never written. This was never to be discovered. It doesn't exist on the planet. It had to come. It had to come from human Akash that remembered. And when it did, it would be the signal and the sign. It would be proof that it is happening. That's only the only proof that would be satisfactory and you have come to sing it to us. Let it be known that the mountain has heard it, is ready. Out will pour at the appropriate time and the place through the planets that needs to be. Out will pour the beginning of the maturity that you need, the elegance of consciousness that you need. It is going to start in humans who are least resistant. And those will be those who are young, who have not made up their mind whether this is silliness or whether it's real. And out will flow then the abundance of the maturity that we have for you. And it will be given in whatever scenario of time you create of receptibility and resilience. As you sit here, listen, I am a Dhamma. As you sit here, I know things. I will tell you things on this planet right now. Right now. There are things taking place as you sit here where the old energy wishes you to leave the building and watch the news and say, it can't be real because look what's going on on the planet. There are pockets of old energy that know about this mountain and that will create pockets of disruption and war so that you will believe it is not true. They don't have a chance. They don't have a chance. Not with you here. Do you understand what it must feel like for us, this collective consciousness, to hear you with our DNA singing in our language the lullabies that our mothers have sung to us? Finally, it is time. I am Adama. Thank you. Today, the mountain celebrates. Uh oh. <laughs> Sometimes I get premonitions. I was said, I can't leave. partner steps aside. I ask him to put your E in the chair because we want to talk to him. Yai, first of all, this is not an assignment. <laughs> We're done giving you assignments because you already know before we give them and are halfway through the process. That's what we wish to speak about. The 
process that's going on on the planet right now you will understand far better than anyone so I speak to you the reception is coming in a quantum way from the center of the galaxy which is collected from others who are ascended the collection is from planets who are ascended the Pleiadians have their parents they have their parents there are many in ascension so it is a collective wisdom all over the galaxy delivered to this planet it is received through the portals that represent the 12 time capsules of the planet the pairs that have been discussed this is the fourth pair to open you are now calibrating it. it is transmitted through the ground and then is reflected upon the three grids of the earth that we have discussed in the past the magnetic the crystalline and the Gaia together they posture human consciousness and human consciousness then is postured through the DNA which then reflects that quantum energy which is passed from the grids to it some of it is given real time to the humans on the planet at the time most of it is given to the wombs of those to be born therefore the children will awaken first and change the planet right under the feet of the adults that is the system Now, what I want to tell you oh shockingly accurate one is that as this begins and it begins now the choir is going to change it has to for this has been the beginning the awakening the tones that you have remembered have come literally from one Pleiadian and that was your mother because your mother is still alive not corporally but consciously and she delivers this waiting for you to awaken you are remembering of course the lullabies the sounds the language all of the things but up to now sir you have remembered it in a linear fashion <laughs> and in this linear fashion you would receive it you would record it you would write it down you would give it to those who would direct it you would sing the tones to each other in a way that would create other energies and awaken these portals that we have described to you and that system is now changing the tones as sung are accurate and will remain accurate and they still do the same things but there are more advanced tones coming now the numerology of the last tones that you sing should give it away for they are 27 28 9 and 1 completion and new beginning and so the choir completes a segment of energy and closes it here in Shasta and when it reopens by the orange rock in Uluru next year I want you to sing something a little different here is what you already know because you are sensing that it's coming it's going to be the choir and Yahi it's going to be a triad the three represents the catalyst and the choir becomes a catalytic calibrator of the future portals to open as the time capsules we describe and the part that you're going to play in some of the new tones are going to be different for they're not going to be linear the linearity should be carried by the choir singing two kinds of tones that are simple that would create a bed for you to channel over the new tones that you will give over the choir as the third energy with the two will not be delivered in advance Yahi. they're going to be channeled in real time as you do it <laughs> you knew this was coming it's not an assignment and I know you're comfortable with it sir because you're already doing it 
you have noticed something with the tones that you have been given in the last few months that they're never the same way twice they change because the planet is changing under you because your mother's information is starting to awaken and each time you get it it's different so now don't go through the process of linearizing any of it don't even write it down just stand and deliver you are the one Yai, to do this and I know you will blessing My partner steps aside. All through these last two years, I have attempted to demystify the kinds of things that are happening now on the planet that seem odd. <clears throat> if someone were to attend this and they were not familiar with the energies they wouldn't understand. And so I want to turn again to history. I want to remind you of something. There is a profundity happening right now with the indigenous of this planet that reflects the ancient prophecies of over 4,000 years. And 4,000 years is simply how long ago they knew they existed, but they've existed for 10. For even the Sumerians had this prophecy. And the prophecies come together now on the planet synchronistically. They echo what the Mayan calendar said indeed would happen. The end of the long count represented the end of the calendar completely so terminal was it that it could not be revised. A new calendar had to be put in place. It has many names. For the ancients were not able to connect together to give it a common name, but the prophecies were the same. Prophecy of the eagle and the condor representing a higher consciousness, a softer earth. The awakening of the puma, the movement of the kundalini. It continues and continues. North America, South America, all over the planet. And it has nothing to do with new age. It has nothing to do with the choir and yet everything to do with all of it. This is not a New Age event. This is an ancient event. The very thing that you are doing was foretold by the ancients for this time in history, past the precession of the equinoxes, that would bring this planet to an awakening. And I want to remind all of those who would watch this in, in disbelief or not understand what this was all about. It is the fulfillment of a prophecy that is not published well but will be. For the ancients are getting together and the indigenous are starting to realize that the prophecies that they've all had all over the planet are the same one. And that prophecy says that should you pass this marker, this fifth time, a chance, a potential for an awakening planet would exist. That is not from cryon. That's from civilization. Your planet has created this. The ancients have told you about it. It has been recorded and it is here. It's not a mystery, and it's not something that only a few would understand or do. It is part 
of ancientness and the prophecy of those who would bring you something on this planet that would be hopeful. And so I want to again deliver the message that in the process of fulfilling this prophecy, there is no predestination that it will take place, only a potential that is so grand, that has been so strong for 25 years that you've been preparing for it. I am crying. I would not be here. I would not have visited my partner. I would not have awakened his consciousness if the potential was small. The potential is grand and it is great. And you cannot sit back and watch it happen. You are actively participating in an event that many would think was odd and strange, but you feel it, do you not? And it has to do, not with entities in the mountain, but a grander purpose which we call divine source and God. Is it possible that the master physicist of the universe is involved in your life? Is it possible that the master physicist of the universe is involved in the ascension planets that are trying to speak to you and will eventually, if you let them. And that this is all tied in with a monotheistic God that is worshipped by this planet, seen as beautiful, as perfect. Could it be that these things all tie together in a way that nobody expected? And that it's intuitive. And that there would be those from all lands who could relate to this prophecy from all lands. And that the north would meet the south, bringing together, finally, the consciousnesses of politics, business, religion, government, into a softer existence where they can see one another differently and get along. This is why you're here. It's not New Age. It's not a group of fanatics singing funny tones, and that's what you'll be told. Indeed, it is the love of God personified in a quantum way that so many people cannot see or enjoy or feel. Human beings are so quick to feel the emotions of love and not understand them and accept invisible forces, and yet they will draw the line at this. Well, it's time to get out of the bubble and see what this truly is. It is a magnificent manifestation of everything the ancients told you you could do and what would happen if you put your mind to it. I want you to go from this place. Enjoy the sun on your face. You may even sing the mountain if you choose. For they have seen what you have done this day, and now they're ready to celebrate with you. Let the calibration be finished. And let the nodes and the mole come together that were created for this purpose on this day in year one. It is done. And you have done it. And so it is.